We're going to bring in uh, one of the Heatles. It's two-time NBA champion, 11-time NBA All-Star, Chris Bosh. He's going to join us at the Odd Couple. Chris, welcome in. You've been laying low a bit since you've had a, to step away from basketball. What have you been up to? Um, really taking care of my kids. That's uh, <laughs> that's that's the number one priority, being a father and a husband. Um, my, my son is in first grade now, so... You know, that takes a lot of attention for, you know, getting him together and making sure he's ready for school um, and really just, you know, thinking about uh, really what the future holds for me, if basketball's in there or not, and um, really just trying to, you know, you know, build for the future, man. That's that's kind of really where I'm at. Um, it, it's been interesting, an uh, interesting thing, just being around the family and being around my kids and and really growing um, as a person and as a man into, into other things, you know? Speaking about basketball and your health, how is your health, and is basketball really an option, or is it just something that you uh, have held on to until, you know, you get to a point where you, you don't think you can play anymore? Well, I mean, it's, um, it's kind of just been uh, uh, more of a search. Yeah, I wouldn't just I, – I don't feel like I'd be wasting my time just trying to do things and, and, and it's just a, a end result that I can't, you know, really control. So, yeah, I do think, uh, you know, basketball is somewhere in there. And if it's not, you know, it is what it is. I know I'm getting pretty close to, uh, you know, having um, um, to really get serious and make, you know, uh, a very uh, good decision about it. And, it's, you know, those things take time. But, you know, I feel confident about things and where things are going and where I'm at you know, as a person. And my health is good. You know, I appreciate people always asking me, is my health good? But, you know, people have to remember, I was upright the last time I played a basketball game. It's funny, people ask me, how's your health? And Like, yo, last time you saw me, you know, I got 20 points. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, I wasn't yep. uh, hunched over in the hospital or anything like that. So, you know, the health is good, and, and you know, I'm blessed, man. Chris, uh, a big topic nowadays is what it's like to play with LeBron James. You know, with the Lakers, people say Brandon Ingram's game is suffering because he's a guy that needs the ball in his hands, and obviously you can't do that with LeBron on your team. Uh, you even told Kevin Love when LeBron went back to Cleveland that, hey, your game's going to change. Give us a real assessment. I mean, we saw your game, you know, change, especially in the last couple years when you guys were together you kind of ended up being that, that spot-up shooter at the three-point line or on the perimeter, and your numbers mm -hmm. obviously went down from what they were in Toronto. What was it like, and what, what type of sacrifices did you have to make to play with LeBron? Well, I mean, you, you're going to have to play off the ball. You know, he's a, he's a player that's going to, you know, he's a natural point guard, so he's going to orchestrate the offense at certain times and get guys involved, and he's going to, want to kind of orchestrate the offense and make plays. I want people to understand that basketball is basketball. I know it's like it's kind of unfair to say, well, you know, with LeBron, you're going to play. Let me tell you, if you go down to San Antonio, your game is going to change. You know, if you go to Miami and that system, your game is going to change. If you play with James Harden, your game is going to change. You know, if you play with any great player or great coach or great you know, team organization, you're going to have to change it up a little bit, you, you, you know, and, and as basketball players, you have to evolve and get better, you know, and, and work on other facets, you know, saying a guy needs the ball. We, you know, we all need the ball, of course, but, um, you know, he's a ball dominant player and um, that's what point guards do. And he's a natural, you know, just a natural point guard. He's been looking at offense his whole life. So it really is just about falling in place and, understanding, you know, points of attack and how to be effective on the court. And that's, you know, just because you're playing with him, that doesn't mean it's not going to change throughout your career. You know what I mean? Right. right. Chris, the, the uh, you know, obviously going down to Miami, forming a super team, uh, the big f press conference and fireworks and not one, not two, not three, all the way to seven or eight championships as it was presented to people. And then you guys win two out of four, and then LeBron kind of bolts. What, was it fulfilling? Obviously, winning a championship is always great, and you won two in those four years, and you went to the NBA Finals all those years. 
but but was it a little disappointing and not what you expected? Because some people think it it wound up not being the special thing people thought it would be. Uh, you know, define special. Uh, special would have been like if you won, you guys won three in a row. That would have been something that not a lot of people or teams have done. But you won two out of four. Uh, you had three great players all out of the same draft, all from the Eastern Conference. Uh, you, you dominated, but you didn't win the, the championships. People thought that you were guys were going to be unbeatable, and, and you got beat twice. Well, I mean, there's no such thing as unbeatable. Uh, the sport is a sport. Um, you know, we're all historians of the game. So uh, how many three-peaters do you have? You got the Bulls twice. Kobe uh, Shaq. You got the Lakers. Yep. Yeah, you got Kobe and Shaq. And now the um, uh, the Warriors the are Warriors, trying now. Yep. You got people, what, teams that went to four finals in a row. You got us, the Warriors, the Cavs, and the Celtics. You know, so in the grand scheme of things over every, you know, every team that's ever played and every person that's ever played in professional sports, I think that's pretty that's pretty strong, you know. Um, and to play, you know, against one of the greatest teams to ever play this game and the greatest players to ever play this game. So yeah, we had stiff competition. Um, you know, we rose to it. We were only together four years, you know, and it is what it is. But uh, you know, I don't know what people expect. Maybe people should stop expecting. Um, you know, the great things are not easy to accomplish. You know, and. Two out of four, that's, that's pretty solid to me. I mean, I don't know many teams, and if you can name, you know, if you can use two hands to name team that's done that, you know, in all professional sports, then, you know, I'd be impressed. Chris, so, some people have said, you know, obviously you were a 20, about well, a 23 and 11 guy in Toronto. Obviously mm-hmm. in Miami, your numbers went down. Last couple of years, it was 16 and 6. I've said that I think. It, it still was great for you. It enhanced your career. You won two championships. Even though your numbers went down, you're a part of this historic big three that in many ways probably led to a, a change in the NBA. But yeah. is that fair or do you ever look back like, you know, what would I have done if I just stayed in Toronto and put up these huge numbers and had my own team? Nah, no, no, no. I think, um, you know, in my in my decision making process, I asked you know many many um, guys who have done it before me, many great players. You know what was the most important thing for them um, in their quest and what they what what they most remember as a player. You know, and I kind of took all those things into consideration. The numbers is just numbers. You know, um, at the end of the day, nobody's going to say, "Oh man, he scored you know X amount of points." And, and did these things, and if they don't remember, they don't remember. You know, you right. want to be a, a part of the big stage. and You know, you want to have memorable moments in the league that are, you know, impressive and, and, and have a lasting impact, and, you know, an impact on kids in the community and stuff like that, you know, and, and just to show people that, you know, uh, things are very, very possible. Uh, for me, yeah, numbers, you know, numbers really don't do anything, and I know we're kind of in a stats um, driven society um, with data and everything, but you know, numbers is numbers. It really doesn't mean anything. I mean, twenty and twelve and a loss. You know, if you get your numbers and, and you lose, then you know it kind of sucks a little bit as a competitor. And you know, I've been a competitor in this game. Um, you know, since I was a very small child. You know, so being able to to actually you know learn about the real sport of basketball and and put myself into the team, uh, put myself into defense and getting better and better. You know, those are, you know, those were the most important things to me. It's the odd couple on Fox Sports Radio, two-time NBA champion Chris Bosh joining us. Chris, uh, LeBron talked about that uh, he he tried to recruit uh, players to come to Cleveland. Did he try to get you to come to play with him? And you said no, but you, is that true? No, I know. We he never talked about coming. I mean, that was impossible because I signed my deal uh, with, uh, you know, signed a long-term deal with the Heat when he signed his deal with the uh, with the Cavs, and they were already in intact. You know, unless you were talking about before, which that wasn't either. But yeah, no, nah, he never asked me to come to Cleveland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I I had heard that 
you know, before you guys went to Miami, he was trying to get you to go play with him in Cleveland. Yeah, that, that's but what you he, were like, I mean, obviously Miami's a better option than Cleveland, and you still had D Wade there, and then all that's when all three of you guys talked about playing in Miami. Oh uh, yeah, it was free hey, back. Yeah, back then it was free agency. You know, uh, I, I don't think uh, anybody was in a, especially him was in a in a in a in a, in a position to really call the landscape because there were multiple teams, cap space. You know, there were multiple big uh, time free agents as we all you know remember. And so it was never a conversation of join me here, join me there. It was, you know, more so of like trying to forecast the future a little bit. The thing that some I'm always surprised. Some, some, pe- some people say you guys, I think it was, was it 08? It would have been 08 when you played on the Olympic team that that's when this began. Uh, but did it really begin that summer in 2010? Like, were you surprised when it was like, man, we, we all three could really play together? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't in 08. <laughs> okay. It wasn't that, that. I know, you know, it's funny. Um, somebody asked me that the other day, like, yeah, yeah, 2008. I said, no, bro, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, that didn't happen in uh, in 2008 or whatever. But, you know, we did have a good time competing <laughs> in the Olympics. Yeah. But, yeah, it was uh, more so it was a slowly evolving thing and just kind of seeing how things was coming together. And, then, you know, everything worked out um, 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 for us. And, you know, now we're here. So, you know, I was uh, really happy to be a part of that. Chris, let me ask you this, because you, you've talked about how tough it is to retire, you know, just to maybe because it wasn't necessarily on your own terms. And I look yeah. back and when you were playing in Toronto, you used to do, you know, commercial tube about going to the All-Star game and like a used car salesman and all that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, man, this guy's got a lot, you know, and I even did things with you when you were still playing. We, we co-hosted Mike and Mike and all that. I was like, this guy's got a lot of things he wants to do outside of basketball. Is it different, though, once you don't have basketball as the number one thing um, to want to pursue all those things? Or are those th- things still in your future and things you want to do? Yeah, I mean, I've always um, tried to be a creative person throughout my lifetime, even, you know, growing up and that was kind of the other things, you know, I always had other things um, outside of basketball, you know, yeah, I mean, I never, yeah, I mean, I just, I was always having fun. That's what the main, you know, thing about it is, is always to have fun and, and, and not really worry about, um, you know, what people think or, or how things can be perceived and just kind of go out there and do it. I mean, I'm a basketball player at heart. Um, that'll always be the case, uh, probably throughout my whole life. But you know, eventually we have to transform and and um, you know move on to other things. And I think basketball is definitely a huge staple because there are things that go on inside the game, dealing with day to day life. You know, you 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 get tools and you can you know acquire knowledge that you know is very valuable. Um, so for me, I try to always think about those things and think about the stories and, and kind of the things that's worked for me and helped me, uh, um, you know, be, be a good player, be a great player and, and help me get through, you know, tough situations when it was time to perform. I think that's like one of the most important things. And, and, you know, the, the thing as far as professional sports is concerned is to, you know, answer the call when it's time. So. You know, I've taken those things and kind of prided myself on everything that I've read and, you know, things that I've studied and, and things that have worked, you know. So it's all about trial and error and, and you know, things that help, has helped me and hurt me as well, you know, learning from mistakes throughout my career. So, you know, I try to embody that. I try to take it and, um, you know, eventually I'm going to use it and, um, you know, and, and it'll help me out. It'll help my family out and, help me pursue other things all right chris great stuff man two-time nba champion 11-time nba all-star chris bosh thanks a lot for joining the i couple man appreciate it thanks a lot guys. all right man thank you